Carolina Fishing TV, showing you how to catch more fish. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Carolina Fishing TV. Today I've got my father, Tom Cronk, on board. Um, I get to see my dad now about uh, two weeks every year, and one of those weeks is in the summertime. So he's come down to visit me. What's it been, about five years now you've been gone, Dad? Uh, about seven now. Seven years? It's been seven a while. Years, yep. Why don't you go ahead and tell them why, why you got pulled away from the, the awesome little town of Swansboro. Well, my wife Barbara decided she wanted to live near the grandchildren, so we moved to uh, Georgia. We live about 50 miles north of uh, Atlanta, Georgia, in Dawsonville, Georgia. For now, you know, I've got a week of Dad hanging out. We're going to go out and have some fun today. Uh, we've got an incredible Spanish mackerel bite and some nice kings in with them out along the beach, all the near shore live bottoms. Uh, we've been picking up Spanish from about three pounds, the small fish, up to six or seven pounds, the largest fish. King mackerel that are running with them are anywhere from five pounds to yesterday we had, uh, well, we had a tail taken off one and he still had about 24 pounds of fish. We're going to do it all with light tackle today. I've got a bunch of pen conkers, 4,000s on here, loaded down with 10 to 15 pound test braid. We're going to go ahead and get some small live baits, some little men hating about four to six inches. Now we're going to see how much fun we can have today. Get on these fish, hopefully, uh, fill a cooler for them for a, a good cookout, and, and hopefully get on a really nice sized king today. So stay tuned to Carolina Fishing TV. On board with myself, Captain Jeff Cronk, and my father, Tom Cronk. And I know he'll put us on the fish because I come down <laughs> no every pressure. year and we catch a load of them. No pressure. <laughs>We've got for today for fishing for these Spanish and Kings, especially the Spanish, we need about a four to six inch bait. The larger baits are great on the Kings, but we get too large of a bait and it, it just makes it tough on the Spanish They come up and nip the baits. Typically you work your, away from the ICW and get into the creeks off the sound or in the river. Once that sun comes up in the morning, usually these baits will start popping on the surface a little better and, and uh, as you get later and later in the morning, they'll, they'll really come together and school on top. Some days getting menhaden is so easy. You pull into a creek the first cast, you've loaded the live walls down. And sometimes it's hard to get them to come together and you're picking off, you know, half a dozen, a dozen of cast. Got them. Now that's the way they're supposed to pop. And that's the way you're supposed to catch them. You got all we need for the day right there. <laughs> That's on our, one of our baits there. Yeah. He's on. Okay. He's on. Fish on. Pick him up, Dad. You got him. That's it. Just hold him up high. And these fish, you can't really do anything with them with light tackle. When they're running, you got to let them run. You know, and all you can do is let them run. When they stop running, then you can start pumping and working them to bring them in. I got another one on here. We got one on center rod. Top center just slammed it. Now we've got two on, so I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, I'm going to clear this third rod because I'm trying to operate the boat. My dad's got one on there. I've got one on. Most of these fish, if you're real careful, if you've got a good heavy duty yeah. net, you can dip them. And keep his head just about six inches below the water. And right when your net man gets ready to net it, the guy with the fish on the line would want to lift up and just kind of pull that head back on that fish. Because when he sees that net coming, he's going to try to dive. And you got one swipe at him, then you get the hooks. All right, pull back right there, Dad. We got him. Look at that, that's a nice Spanish right there, boys. We've got one about, right about four pounds or so. Davin's gotten a good four pounder right there. Pretty Spanish mackerel. This is a, a great fishery. It's up and down the whole North Carolina coast. It's not just at a boat either. That one hit pretty hard. That was very aggressive, that fish. You get out here first in the morning, they start hitting like that, smacking it and running 20, 30, 40, 50 yards or more line off, and you know it's gonna be a good morning. And it's usually almost instantaneous. If you're on good ledges and whatnot, around. And uh, that one's a little smaller. That fish is uh, very big for what most folks are used to seeing on Spanish. I mean, he's still a, still about a, uh, probably about a three pound Spanish. Nice one.
We want to target both species. Um, obviously, the Spanish mackerel at four or five pounders got a much smaller mouth than these 10, 20, 30 pound kings. Um, they also require a whole lot less leader in front of them. A lot of times they get leader shy. I don't think we're going to have that problem today. We've got about a 10 to 12 mile an hour wind out of the south. It's a little choppy out here, so a little commotion on the surface to help hide our leaders. What I'm using is number six gold trebles, and everybody knows Spanish love gold anyway, and we're also using menhaden, which have got a goldish, bronzish colored side to their body. Uh, so they blend in real well. I've got about six to eight inches of leader in front of this and since it's a little choppy out here we're going to probably step up to about a foot of leader in front of them. This will give us a little extra leader in case we get a big king on. I'm using little little tiny 30 pound swivels. I'm usually using like a 25 to 29 pound wire. If you get a few bends in it here and there I can bend them back with the pliers. I've got 40 pound and I got 29 pound today. As rough as it is, choppy as it is, I'm going to stick with a 40 pound wire today. When you purchase this uh, Maylene wire on the back of the bag, they actually have an example of a haywire twist on there. About five or six pounds of drag and that's it. Beyond that, we could straighten a hook, these hooks, or, or rip them out of their skin. With that braided line, you want to be real careful about uh, touching that line when those Spanish and Kings are on there because they can, they can go from zero to wide open so quick and they can burn a hole right through your finger. I saw some color. Yeah. Nice Spanish, it looks like. Ooh, he's going to circle nice. around, he's going to just hold him, he's going to circle around and come back. Careful, you're holding that line. Yeah, he's going to grab the pole. Yeah, he's hooked on the side of the head. Yeah, just don't reel up into it. Yeah. I thought it was nice. hooked sideways, yeah. Nice one there, Dad. Good job. He's close to five pounds, that one. They're such small baits, a lot smaller than most people are used to trolling with in the ocean. And they're, they're real weak baits, so after you get his nose hooked, and literally hooking right through the nostril, and your rig is nice and tight, and find out where that other hook needs to set. It needs to set right there so there's no slack in that leader. So I'm going to pull back just a hair, pull back on that front hook a little bit, and bury that hook. So that when that hook gets in his body, his skin, that leader's flat against the body, there's no slack. If there's slack in there, he'll throw the hook. We're fishing real small baits, real light lines, so the wind plays, uh, plays a big role in, in how that bait works on top of the water. So what we're going to do is we'll just run three rods today. I'm going to put these two short behind the boat. They're almost like prop wash baits, meaning they're 15, 20 feet behind the boat. I'm going to put one a little bigger bait, and I'm going to put him long, about 30 yards back. Keep a lot of bend in that rod. Fight him nice and easy, a lot of bend. That might be a king there, folks. Might be. He's right on top of it. He took about 75 yards of line. He came to the surface. Might just be a pretty Spanish. He's kind of shaking his head like a big Spanish or a small oh, king there. now. He's, he's not acting like a big king mackerel at all. You know, he ain't acting like a Spanish either though. Keep him down deep. Yeah, Spanish. Go forward, nice Spanish there. That could be a state citation. Don't reel up anymore, raise your rod tip up. He's close. Got a fat belly on him to go about, probably about five, I'd say five, two, five, three. So pretty Spanish mackerel. Let's put him in the box and see if we can get a bigger one. We're going to see if we can get these fish to the top. I had a front libel with about 75 or 80 pogies in there. We're going to throw a few out here, injure a few off the top of that motor. Let's see if we can get some fish blowing up behind the boat. Just enough to stun them. Keep them on top behind the boat there. <laughs> Don't pull real hard. He's still moving. He's going, isn't he? Yep. Look at that Spanish mackerel there. Yep. Pretty one there. Good job, Dad. Good job. Uh, I think a lot of times it's so much easier to just take the rods you already have rather than spool all your rods up again with, with lighter line and whatnot. Um, a lot of folks take the same rods they've been king mackerel fishing and stuff with for years and they got you know, 20 and 30 pound test line on there and it's so visible. Especially that high vis stuff, that green and that yellow, we avoid it, we go very light braid. That might be our king. Is he going still? Yep. I don't know, he hit the top line. 
he went pretty good. What he run about 75 yards of line out, but he's not uh, so far. He's not acting like a big king. He's still acting like a nice Spanish. Woo! He's a big one. <laughs> he's holding me down. <laughs> Four pounds. Keep about five, six foot of line out. Just hold him there. Don't reel up anymore. Okay. Raise up right there. Let him circle around and then raise him up. Oh. I raised up high right there. One more time around. Yeah, he's huh? coming around. Pull him out of the water now. Right there. Pull his head up. Got him. Oh, pretty Spanish map. Right at that five pound class range. Captain Roy Heverly. He operates at Island Harbor Marina over there. He, I think he just put a big king in the boat just a, just a minute or two ago. As a matter of fact, I'm going to hail him on the radio and find out. How about you, Roy? How about a live bait? You on here is Jeff, fishing for life trying. Hey, Jeff. Was that a good king you had there a minute ago? Got two nice kings. Um, yeah, two nice kings. We had uh, one nice fish hooked up, don't know what he was. All the rest of these are just those, those pretty Spanish. And we had, while we, both times we had kings, we had like, two at a time. We had another one skied. There's another one right back, back there somewhere. When this one hit, another one skied, the bait he knocked off. They, did they pop those five, six inch baits or did you bring some big baits? Uh, all small baits out. I, I did go to one king rig and luckily that's what he's hit both times. <laughs> what are the chances of that, right? Uh, Alright, raise it up there. There's a much smaller fish there. Yeah. Take the time to hit that stuff immediately. You don't even need soap and water. Just get some salt water real quick and before that blood stains your boat. Look at that crap there. That's a big fish there. You under that rod or over that rod? Under. Go forward, go that way, because that rod's bone slack. Look at it. Okay. Coming up already? Yep. That bite has really changed. We've been, uh, we've been out here a couple hours now. The breeze has picked back up out of the southwest, and typically that southwest wind is not the best bite on these fish for some reason. I pull his head out of water right there. Oh, nice one there. It's beautiful Spanish there. That's a nice one, yeah. The difference between that Spanish and that king, real easy. Black dorsal fin, between that, you've got the bright yellow spots, which some juvenile kings will have these very light yellow spots, usually not as prominent. And then uh, the pupil, the pupil of the eye is actually smaller on a Spanish mackerel. If you're looking at a king mackerel, it'd be much larger. And between those four or five different things, you can tell the difference between a Spanish and a king pretty easy. Got one screaming here. The bites definitely slowed down this afternoon, just a little more than midday actually. It's only about 10.30. My fish just jumped there, did you see that? It's got two hooks in them or one? Got him in. He's probably just on, right up just under four pounds or three and three quarter from about three and a half to six pounders out here all day long. And uh, if we would if we could maintain like an easterly breeze or easterly wind, northeast, southeast, that bite would probably continue real strong all day. It's really slowed down for us now. It's about every 10 or 15 minutes we get a knockdown. We call this a poor man's downrigger. We'll take anywhere from on this light tackle, two or three ounce bell weight. On the heavier tackle offshore, a little bit of four or five ounce bell weight and just put a rubber band on it. Locking that rubber band. We're gonna wrap that around our line about you know, about 10 feet above our bait. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna do it right here. The bait's out there now. I'm gonna just throw it over the line and pull it in. And uh, that's braided line, it won't slide on it too easily. So yeah, until the fish hits it. When the fish hits it, it'll slide back and forth until we get that sinker back up. Keep him down, keep him down that side. I got this. That might be our king. He's going, he's going, he's going, he's going. No, 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 you stay where you're at. All right, you're good. Tighten your drag, quarter turn on that. He's going, that fish. Dad's got him a decent fish on there. If it's a Spanish, it's so definitely over four pounds if it's a Spanish. He made a good 75 yard run, but he's uh, turned around, come toward the boat, and he's following behind us now, doing the death circle. 
pull on up. Nice Spanish. He's hung by the side of his head there. Nice Spanish there. There's one hitting the five and a half, five and three quarter pound range. They go over five pounds there. Well, folks, we're back at the dock here at Dudley's Marina in Swansboro. It's probably, I don't know, about 11.30 or so. Dad and I had a good morning this morning. It was a steady bite. We put up 12 Spanish. I think the smallest one we got is about two pounds. The rest of these fish are from about three and a half, three and three quarter pounds to about uh, five and a half, five and three quarter. And these fish are big enough to get some really nice fillets off from. Really good on the grill. And um, let's go put them in the cooler and go rip some fish up. That Spanish is a spinal column. The spinal cord doesn't stick way out off the body, so you can you can pretty much just run a knife right down, flat down his side, and uh, you won't really lose much meat. You can lose a little less meat if you trim them out. Kind of outline the body real quick, right along the edge. Just cut that edge of that meat, raise it off that bone on that edge there. Now you can just slide in right till you hit the bone, spinal column. Come right down, and I'm just pressing right down against that spinal column, and you won't lose any meat. There he is. There's the bone right there. Just barely any meat left on there. This is, uh, like I said, a female. There's the row right there. The only bone in that fillet is going to be right down the center. Other than that, we'll just slice up the belly. And pretty much that, that Spanish right there, here's about five and a half pounds. You got a, you got about a pound and a half fillet off each side and really there's about portion sizes right there so you get two nice steaks out of it uh, you can take the skin off but there's no need to there's no scales on that to worry about and that skin helps you know hold it together where you're grilling it so I usually take that stuff season it up put it meat side down on some tinfoil and grill it with the skin up and I'll drop those fillets in a ziploc bag with a zesty Italian dressing for about an hour before I get ready to put them on the grill and salt them up a little bit excellent eating excellent eating if you happen to get down around Swansboro, Moorhead City, further down, Wrightsville and all that, uh, all those live bottoms, artificial reefs within two miles of the beach, those are the places you want to target. Uh, you got to find some menhaden, you know, four to six inch menhaden, um, those number six gold trebles, set those rigs up. If you want to experience it uh, firsthand and hop on board, I know myself, uh, Captain Mike Taylor, we run trips on these fish all summer long. A lot of the guys that work with Carolina Fishing TV do it as well, so check out the site, carolinafishingtv.com.